You're listening to The Real Well Show with Kathy Fetke, the real estate investor's resource. Have you been trying to build your real estate portfolio and sometimes getting overwhelmed or just stuck? Or building your business, maybe it's a real estate business or another kind of business, and also feeling like you're hitting a ceiling or just not able to grow or if you grow, getting more and more overwhelmed. So the thought of growth just sounds terrible because no one wants to be more overwhelmed. I'm Kathy Fedke. Welcome to The Real Wealth Show. I'm excited to address this topic today with my co-founder of Real Wealth and hubby, Rich Fedke. Welcome. Thank you. And co-author of Scaling Smart. Yes. <laughs> we get to say that now. Yeah, we and get to say that now. Of, of daughters. <laughs> we are releasing our new book, Scaling Smart, September 10th. Very exciting. First time we wrote a book together, we were given this book offer from Bigger Pockets Publishing. Uh, they actually did a survey to see what people want to learn more about. And this was the topic. So they came to us. Uh, partly because you've been a business coach for over 20 years mm. and we've been in business over 20 years, which is, is hard to do, right? Most businesses don't make it past, uh, year five. Yeah. Yeah. If you're lucky, right? Yeah. Uh, and the cool thing I loved about this book too is that we reached, uh, reached out to our friends and colleagues who have built successful businesses and scaled successful real estate portfolios and got their input. So I learned so much writing this book. Not only did we bring the lessons in that we've learned over the past 21 years in business together, but also from these expert and these business leaders. So stoked about that. Yeah, we learned so much. I mean, really big players in the industry were willing to share some of their secrets to scaling. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things I love about the book is, again, calling it scaling smart. And we compared this to having a smartphone or uh, a smart home, mm -hmm. which the idea is that you customize your home or your phone for you and your needs. And you know how can you customize your business for your needs? And that starts with chapter one of our book of really knowing what your needs are. Like, what are you trying to do? Why do you have this business to begin with? A lot of yeah. people don't ask themselves that question. Yeah, I think it's really important. Our, that first chapter is called Why Grow? Because we've seen so many people, countless people who get caught into this growth trap. They just, they're growing, but then for the sake of what is the question? And they get caught up in this and they try to grow so fast, whether it be their business or their real estate portfolio, that they end up growing themselves broke, meaning that they overspend, they get stretched too thin, they start losing their mind, they start losing their team, and then they end up growing themselves broke. So that's, we address that first because we've seen it so many times with people in real estate and people in business is trying to grow too fast. And in too many directions, driving your team crazy because yeah. they're working on one project and then you bring a whole nother project and they just... It's this whiplash of what, which one do you want us to work on? What's the priority? So getting really clear about what, what is that? Where is your team headed? And are you all paddling in the same direction? I want to read this part of that first chapter called Why Grow, page 27. It's called The Trap of Bigorexia. Oh, yeah. And this is one of my favorite chapters is the one that you wrote. And it starts like this. Back, I'm going to try to do it in your voice. Back <laughs> in the 80s, don't try to do that. <laughs> when I, Rich, had a flowing red mullet and neon <laughs> baggy pants, I did kind of know you then uh, in the 90s, but you were still wearing those baggy pants. I was a competitive bodybuilder. And for 10 years, I entered uh, competitions ranging from the Salisbury Beach Physique Con Competition all the way to Mr. Massachusetts, where you placed second. Mm -hmm. uh, then you kind of go on to say that... Uh, even though many of these bodybuilders are, you know, huge, they don't feel that, that way. Here, here you say, trust me, beneath those rock hard pecs and biceps, many of them have a soft, insecure heart, mm -hmm. often whispering, am I swole enough? <laughs> and then you say, from my experience and conversations with many of my fellow Arnold, Arnold Schwarzenegger wannabes, there's often a not good enough thought process going on in their minds. We call it bigorexia back in the day. So mm. tell me about that. How does bigorexia, where these huge bodybuilders actually don't feel big, just like and uh, someone suffering from anorexia never feels small enough. How does that apply to business and real estate? 
Well, it's amazing because, you know, you and I will go to these conferences and we'll be talking to someone and they'll say like, oh, I have, you know, 75 doors or I have 125 doors or whatever they're, they're talking about. And they're like, but I want to have a thousand, you know, it's like, oh, why? You know, why? because it's getting caught up into that. Am I swollen enough? Am I big enough? And so they, they're trying to prove something themselves or they're not checking in about the why they want to do that. Or they're around other people saying, this is how many doors I have, whatever it is. And they start to feel less than. So they, they get caught in that trap. So it's kind of a warning of like with bigorexia where, you know, back in the day of being a bodybuilder and trying to cover up and never big enough, never big enough. In bodybuilding, you see guys starting to do growth hormone and, and steroids and they go over the top and then they they still don't feel big enough, but they start to put their health on the line. So it's the same thing. Bigorexia shows up in real estate investing and in business is often you start to put your health on the line, your mental health, and that can get in the way. So we wanted to address that first with the why grow chapter to help people get really clear on what is important to them. What does that future look like of what they're trying to get and for the sake of what? So for the sake of what are you trying to scale your business? For the sake of what are you trying to scale your real estate portfolio to get really clear on that outcome? And then plan around that. So really it's around building your business around your life instead of trying to build your life around your business, you know, trying to squeeze it in. So that's huge. Yeah. One of the things you said is if, you know, if you feel, feel like you have to keep growing, keep growing and that can affect your mental health. Well, it can affect all areas of your life. For example, many people will say, well, I'm doing this for my family. Mm -hmm. But if you interview the family, they're like, this isn't for me. I didn't want him to be gone or her to be gone all the time. We want, you know, you, to be together. We want you to be here for vacations or whatever. Um, you know, this first chapter, we really help people with, um, I don't know, 20 questions that we ask in that very beginning to, to make sure you know that you're growing at the right pace that's really healthy for you, your family, and everything that's important to you. Yeah. So, and then it's get clear. If we're looking at the chapters of the book, it's like going into that about what do you want, designing your business and or your real estate portfolio around the life that you want. So starting that with that vision, the goal of what you want it to look like, and then designing it that way. And then from there, the next chapter and the next part is what your, what is your business about? And so it's whether that be your real estate business or your whatever business that you have, What's it about? What is the purpose of that? What's the, what's the mission? What's the vision? What are you trying to create? What's the value that you're trying to create for your customers and your team? So it's really starting with that. So it's all about kind of creating that business blueprint, if you will, or a, a scale, kind of a scaling plan of like, where do we want to go? Where do we want to be in five years and 10 years? And then working backwards and getting clarity about how you can move toward that more effectively with your team. Yeah. And then um, bringing on team, that's one of our next chapters is mm -hmm. how do you get your team to be as excited about your business as you are? You know, too often we'll see a leader of a business who's really gotten maybe the first chapter right. Like they know why they want this business and they're clear. Maybe they want a certain amount of money, uh, but they haven't, that, your team isn't really going to work hard so that you can live your dreams, right. right? But if they can be enrolled and what, what, how is this business going to change lives and how are they going to benefit by building this business? So we, we, t we spend a lot of time on, on the next chapter of building the right team and the people who are aligned with that vision, but of course, having that vision first so that everybody mm -hmm. knows that where they're headed. Yeah. I mean, and it really comes down to it, whether it be, you know, I'm, let me go step back here because our process for writing the book, when we started, we sat down together, we both had a pad of post-it notes and then our assignment for each other was to take the next 30, 40 minutes and write down all those key lessons that we've learned over the last 20 years in business, over the last 25 years as real estate investors, write those down individually, separate on different post-it notes. And it was the lessons learned, the hard lessons learned, the big wins, the big successes, all that stuff, and even the stories. And then after we were done, we got those post-it notes and we we grouped them on a table into areas, into sections. And we found that a lot of those were the same. Uh, it's like, oh yeah, I had that same exact story, that same lesson, everything. And then some of us, you know, you had some things that I didn't and vice versa. 
But that is what came, be, created the table of contents for the book, all these different lessons and stories. So it comes from kind of real world advice, you know, real world experience and what has really worked. And one of the big ones that stood out in a big section of the book is it's about the people. And it, so it was all about personal leadership. How do you show up as a leader? There's tools and tips and all that from about how to empower and inspire your team around a common vision. Uh, we talk about how to create a profit sharing plan and share in the profits. We talk about donating and inspiring people that way. So whatever it is, it's like th those are all the lessons about the people and the management of that. Yeah. And it was very interesting. It was so fun for, for me to, to do the sticky note thing because we, we would just write down, you know, look back over the last 20 years. What were the highlights? What were the things mm -hmm. that got us through the tough times? What were the game changers for us? And then we interviewed people with much bigger businesses than us yeah. uh, with really sustainable businesses like Ken McElroy, who, you know, he is just a leader in the apartment space. And then Jillian Hellman, who built Realty Mogul, mm -hmm. um, you know, just some powerhouses that we, we interviewed. And we saw a common theme there too, where often, you know, the, the, the thing that has you start a business, that entrepreneurial spirit, where you can wear any hat, you have to wear any and every hat um, to get to get things off the ground when you don't have a lot of money, or even mm -hmm. when you do. When people get funded, they get have too much money too soon, and uh, that that can blow up as well. But generally, people are getting a business going with very little money, and once they get past that point where most businesses fail, but they make it, then there's a whole new level of going from entrepreneur to leader. And the skills are completely different. So we interview them on how they, how they made that transition mm -hmm. from doing everything to then replacing yourself with people even better at it than you. And oftentimes replacing people who helped you get that business started, who were there from the beginning, but maybe aren't the most skilled to take you to the next level. So it was really, really cool to, to see the trend of, of how they did it. And, uh, and, and also how we, you know, we can learn from that and how we're, we've done it too, just replacing ourselves with people who are much better at all these individual tasks that we used to have to do. <laughs> Remember when the org chart was all us, you know? Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's about recruiting and onboarding your A team, whether that be your, your portfolio. We talked about that. You know, who do you need on your team to scale effectively? Not just grow, you know, it's about scale. It's about leverage and taking something where instead of just incremental growth, it's how do you leverage your efforts? How do you leverage your time? And the way you do that is by hiring the right people, training them well, whether that be the, your bookkeeper or your accountant, uh, your tax attorney when it comes to your real estate portfolio, putting that team together. Or for your business, it's you know your head of marketing, your head of HR, it's your um, deal finder, whatever it might be. It's like, how do you assemble that team? And then how do you effectively empower that team to really have what we call you know, a self-managing business? Yeah, that's what that's what the book is really at the in the end all about is we talk so much about cash flow through real estate, but you can you can create cash flow through your business. Hopefully your business is your your real estate is being run like a business. Uh, but you, how do you have your business cash flow for you too, where you could work or not work and you know that like us, you could go away for a month on vacation with your family and come back and things are even in better shape than <laughs> before you left. Yeah. And I think that's where the systems and the processes come in, because once you get the right people on your on your team and you train them well and you got everyone inspired, then you have to have the systems and processes in place. So we did a deep dive on that. That's the whole chapter about let, let's get nerdy and <laughs> we really get nerdy about what, how you can how can you use A.I. to to really run your processes and put things in place? How can you use a system for Taking all those processes, all the things you do on a regular basis, whether that's with keeping up with your properties, your portfolio, or whether that's running your business, all the different systems and processes, how do you track that? How do you know that everything is being done, being done the same way, consistently, effectively every single time? And that's where processes comes into, into play. And, you know, one of the key lessons I think is getting everything into a digital hub, um, whether that be for your real estate or your business, whatever it might be, 
having everything digitized them. This is how we do it. That's the basic. This is how we do it. And you got a checklist or step by step process for everything that you do in that real estate business or in whatever type of business you run, getting it all documented and processed and systematized in a digital format. So everyone has access to it. And so if, if someone leaves, someone goes away like we did for 30 days, we're able to say to our team, here's all the processes. This is how we do it. They were able to, able to access that and run the business while we were away. And we came back to a business that was still running effectively. Or if or if one of your employees who's been killing it at their position, they, they just know it inside and out, but maybe they take maternity leave. Maybe they are sick. Maybe they go on vacation. Yep. We've had this happen a few times where it's like, oh, we forgot to have her train uh, somebody else on how to edit the real well show <laughs> who's going to edit it. You know, so these are, these are the things that, you know, you want to have in place so that it is a self managed business. Yeah. And now, the big lesson for that too, is to have people document their own processes. You know, mm -hmm. it's like you, you, if you're running your business or you're running your portfolio and you got individuals running their area, their specialty, their expertise on what they do, make sure that they document their own process and then so it's so you can understand it and then you can look at it and say, oh, OK, I get this. And like you said, if they have to leave, they have to go on vacation, they quit, whatever, something happens. You've got that documented process created by the person that's been using it. Now, I want to address one one thing that we might have lost some people when you were talking about structure, because a lot of times entrepreneurs don't love structure. That's why they became entrepreneurs. They left the corporate world because they don't right. like structure. That's me. I am a free thinker. I am a dreamer. I love creating new businesses. I love new ideas and new ways to, to uh, make money and to, to serve a need to, you know, I, I see a need and wow, there's a new business idea. Right. right. People like me just don't like structure. And time and time again, I see this frustration between the leader, the this this entrepreneur who got the thing started and has superpowers in being able to do that. That is so hard to get a business off the ground. Mm -hmm. But then the team who does need structure because companies do need structure, they're losing their mind because the leader is, is steering the ship all over the place right. and they have a hard time keeping up with all these changes. So I spent a lot of time in this book addressing that person who is me. How does someone like me submit to structure when that's exactly why we started business in the first place to not have it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, and it's funny too, because I think it's that entrepreneurial spirit that doesn't like a structure told to them, told what yeah. to do. But, you know, you have a structure of when you get up in the morning, you have a structure and how you create your how you make your tea every morning. It's I see it. It's a very clear structure. You follow <laughs> the same exact steps with the same exact measurements. Everything's the same. You have a structure for surfing when the when the swell comes in, you're checking surf line, you're looking at when it's going to be and you come up with that and you follow that process in so many ways that we create structures as entrepreneurs. But what we don't like is structures imposed upon us. So that's why it's always best to empower people to come up with their own structure to say, here's the big goal. So here's where we're going by the end of this year or in 10 years. Here's where we're going. How can we get there? And how are we going to break that down from the 10 year to this year to this quarter to this month and then empower people be a multiplier? Basically, it's like have multiply people who are different than you and more skilled than you by having them come up with their own processes and structures. And then everyone feels empowered because most people don't like being told what to do or how to do it. But when you put it on them saying, here's the goal, how can we get there? Uh, it's amazing what people come up with. Yeah, no, I love that. And that's all about um, the coaching skills that you've had for years. You've been not just building real wealth, but you've been a business coach for other businesses for, uh, like I said, almost as long as I known you, which is over, let's see, we've been married 27 years. So a long time. <laughs> it's been and, a while. Yeah. And what the power of coaching, at least the kind of coaching that you do and that I was also trained in is, is asking questions, being curious, uh, be, you know, too many bosses who, or spouses or parents or whoever who just lay down the law and this is how we do it. 
well, it's really hard to find joy in that kind of environment. Um, yeah. Whereas, like you said, being curious and being more open, asking the right questions, that's where you you find the the gold. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly it. It's asking people, you know, like getting the group together and saying, here's the goal or coming at it with like, here's our vision. As the business leader, sometimes you have to share that vision. Here's where we're going. Here's what we're going to do. This is what we're going to accomplish. And then how can we get there? So yeah, it de definitely it's some it's powerful questions is the key there. It's, it's absolutely. It's vital. Yeah. And in the beginning, we, we, we did help create that vision, but now we let the team do it because it's the team who is going to fulfill it. They're the ones who are going to get us there. So they are part of creating that vision. We, we get together in January. We explain how we do this in the book, um, to, to all decide together, where do we see ourselves in 10 years? How, you know, what's the three year mark and then the one year mark? And how do we break this down? So they are totally bought in because they were part of the dream. And that's a yeah. really good way to keep people for the long term, too, because they're so bought in. They came up with the idea. It becomes a very entrepreneurial company where everyone working in the company is an entrepreneur in their own right. I love that. That's exactly how you nailed it. And it, it's so true. And that that's, I mean, the subtitle of, of the book is designing a self-managing business. And the only way to have a self-managing business is to have self-managing teams and self-managing leaders. And the only way to have that is to have that clear outcome of where you want to go and empower people to come up with ways to get, you know, to move toward that. So, you know, we're all about freedom at Real Wealth, having, you know, money, but also the freedom to live life on your own terms. So that is kind of the baseline of this book is creating a self-managing business creates freedom. If you don't create a self-managing business, then all you do, are, you're just creating another job for yourself, whether that be your portfolio or your business. You might, some people go into business, they think they're going to create something and be entrepreneurs and create freedom, but they do just the opposite. They, they leave the nine to five world and they up, end up in a 24 seven world, <laughs> yeah. 365, you know, it's always having to work. So that's the bottom line premise and the foundation of scaling smart is, is how to grow a self-managing business where it creates more freedom for you to do what you're great at, to use your greatest strengths, to be able to have freedom of time and freedom of money. That's the bottom line of what it comes to. And the only way you can do that is to create a self-managing business. And you do that through empowered people with clear systems and structures in place. Well, I want to let you know that we are very excited to announce our book launch party coming up on September 8th. It will be in Denver. We've rented out the entire movement gym, climbing gym in, in Baker and, uh, in Denver to celebrate the scaling smart. We thought that would be fun. People can scale the walls together. Uh -huh, we'll have right. lots of games. You do not have to climb if you don't want to. There will be beer. If you drink beer, you can't climb. Uh, but, uh, you know, you can, you, it'll be a great networking event. We expect a few hundred people there. If you would like to join us for our, um, scaling smart book launch party in Denver, um, it's free. We just ask that you buy one of our books and we'll sign it for you at the event or you can pre-order it. Just bring your receipt that will give you free entrance to climb. Like I said, it's going to be, we're going to have the whole place to ourselves. It's going to be so fun. It's going to be a blast. Yeah. Whether you live in Denver or the Denver area, come on over for sure. Um, you know, or fly in. We we're have lots of people flying in Southern California. Yeah. You know, it's going to be a blast. So would love to hang out with whoever's there and uh, climb together and, you know, you can drink beer just after you climb. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so um, you can find out more about that at realwealthshow.com. Just look for the connect tab and you'll see the drop down there for live events. We also have a free virtual book launch. If you can't make the Denver party, you can get that information also at realwealthshow.com. Again, under the connect tab, you'll see the live event there for our virtual event. We're going to have Ken McElroy joining us uh, to talk about how he has scaled to, uh, wow, 3 billion or something like that is crazy. Yeah. Uh, yep. And then we'll be talking about uh, how you, how you can scale your retirement um, by taking your active income and investing it passively, uh, different ways to do that. So again, you can find that those details at realwealthshow.com. Yeah. I also want to thank 
everyone for the support that we're getting so far for this book. It is just overwhelming. We are so grateful. So thank you to everyone who's already pre-ordered Scaling Smart, for everyone who's uh, put posted on their social media, all that. So uh, just thank you for that. We're really excited about this book. We're really happy with the, in the way it came out. So I hope you enjoy the read if you do pick up the book. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. We have some pretty goofy stories in there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, Rich, thank you again for joining me here on The Real Wealth Show thank and you. for being such an awesome co-author and co-founder mm, and likewise. CEO of Real Wealth. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And we'll see you all uh, on our next episode or in Denver. All right. Thanks again for joining us here on The Real Wealth Show. We'll see you next time. The views and opinions expressed in this podcast are provided for informational purposes only and should not be construed as an offer to buy or sell any securities or to make or consider any investment or course of action. For more information, go to realwealthshow.com.